All right, good afternoon, everyone. I think I'm in a fairly familiar place for you. So you recognize that. Sorry, no fish tank today, but it was raining outside. So I decided to just stay here as opposed to getting soaking wet on my way out. So, <laughs> so here we are. So um, today we're gonna continue with our um, part three of our Lectio Divina, Pastor Joe style. And then also just uh, take a look at First uh, John, um, or yeah, First John chapter four. Uh, that's gonna be uh, the basis for our, our Bible study this uh, weekend coming up too. So, all right, so let's dive into it. So um, past couple of weeks, we've been working on steps one and two. Step one is the holy reading or the contemplative reading, which is just, you know, repetitive reading. And you can look back at the notes on that if you'd like. Uh, step two in the holy reading or the contemplative reading means you start to move into uh, meditation. This is the meditatio. If the first part is lectio, the reading, the second part is meditatio. And what we were talking about that is just having the word of God just consume you um, and and really you get uh, into a deep flow with with uh, reading that over and over and over again, uh, that the next step, step three, uh, moves this into um, prayer. So that as we begin to, as as God's word is working on us, we, we begin to respond um, through prayer. All right, so step three in, in the holy reading or contemplative reading is the oratio, which is prayer. And as God's word engages and consumes our thoughts, uh, prayer is what flows from God's word. In other words, God's word becomes our prayer. Um, this this type of prayer, this oratio prayer, has been described as one opening their heart to God, um, opening it up so that God is indeed reading that heart. And, and this is what prayer flows from. Um, Another person has described it as conversation with God through God's spirit, that is the Holy Spirit, God's breathed and living word guiding our thoughts and our prayers. So again, this is a, a very deep that comes from this meditation, this, this deep response back to God through this meditation on his word. Another has put it this way. Prayer understood both as dialogue with God, that is, as loving conversation conversation with the one who has invited us into his embrace, and as consecrated and, and as consecration, prayer as the priestly office offering to God of parts of ourselves that we have not previously believed God wants. Um, so this is kind of a you know approaching it from the perspective of the you know, the things that we don't always want people to know about ourselves, right? So uh, this is uh, even in, in, in a weird way, we can feel as if we can keep this from God, um, our sin or um, our troubles, the things that we struggle with, what whatever it is. Um, so this is a different way of, of moving past that. So it's, it's understanding um, Lectio Divina in this way, um, where we are you know, opening ourselves up to parts that we believe that that God didn't originally want in us or would would make God despise us or not like us or something along the lines of that in, in our human reasoning. Um, so so this type of action or this type of prayer, this type of, you know, moving through this Lectio Divina um, is very is helpful, for, especially for somebody that's experienced trauma or is, is trapped in addiction or sadness or suffering of any kinds. And, and perhaps you can maybe even uh, think of a time in your life where this would be particularly helpful. Maybe you're going through this time in your life now. And, and um, again, I invite you to, to follow these steps to really dig into God's word, um, to be sharing, you know, to, to, be, to be knowing that, that God is there, you know, with you through it. God's word also speaks this way, right? Psalm uh, 1914, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. So again, uh, this lends to this kind of conversation. So 
just following up with the examples, just real quick examples. So like, say we take that one from last week, Psalm 139, verse one. Oh Lord, you have searched me and you know me. So when we were repeating this or when we dig into this type of thing, uh, when we get to this prayer part, um, this is what's going to flow from this, something along the lines of this. So our prayerful response to God from meditating upon his word becomes our prayer. For example, Lord, you know me better than I know myself. Um, just even thinking in those terms, if you just really let that sink into your own mind, if you're letting that read yourself, and we, I mean, I mean and it's absolute truth, right? Uh, of course, God knows us even better than, than we know ourselves. But then that helps us move beyond whatever it is that we're maybe getting stuck in, uh, uh, struggle with in life. For example, Lord, you still love me, even though you have searched my inner self. Or, Lord, I am completely known by you, and you call me your child. Help me see my own worth. Help me to see myself as you see me. You see, these are these are deep conversations that that come by digging into God's word and by by reading God's word because we we do know that in God's word um, there is unfathomable love right his his love is everlasting it doesn't matter what we've done it doesn't matter who we are it doesn't matter what we struggle with it doesn't matter what happened you know last night or last year or whatever it, God still loves us and oftentimes it's hard for us to really grab a hold of that and, and hold on to it. So again, uh, just be encouraged in, in this regard at the, at the bottom of the sheet that I've attached, um, you know, on a previous post here. Uh, it'll really get us back to a couple of passages that we've already looked at in, in 1 John chapter 3. Um, so we're going to look at, you know, moving into John chapter 4 today for our reading and getting into devotion. So, so here we go. Beginning at verse 1. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out in the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come into the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and now is in the world already. Little children, you are from God and have overcome them. For he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are from the world. Therefore, they speak from the world, and the world listens to them. We are from God. Whoever knows God listens to us. Whoever is not from God does not listen to us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us not... Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only Son into the world, so that we might live through him. In this love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to love one another. Uh, so again, you know, John continues in his, his book, pu pushing and urging us towards um, love. And as we were talking about earlier with, uh, with this uh, special kind of prayer thing, is that I think oftentimes we have trouble even loving ourselves. And I think John is truly encouraging us that, you know, even in this this testing the spirits, because like, of course there was, this was a big deal back then that the way that people would speak it, um, that they would have this uh, spirit, you know, filled life or something like that. And they would say that it would come from this, that, or the other thing. Um, but but what John is urging here is that that you're testing the spirit and you're testing it through the filter of love. And that is, God's love. And so when we begin to, you know, engage in this particular text, along with the things that we've already been saying, um, you know, I think there's a lot of gospel gems, you know, that are in here, right? Little children, you are from God, 
and have overcome them. You see, you overcome the other spirits. So if you have a spirit in your, you know, in your head that's saying you are unworthy or that, you know, God doesn't love you or you've done something uh, that's not forgivable, right? Well, if we tested that spirit, for example, well, we know that that's not of God because God is love. But we hear this over and over and our minds deceive us on this all the time. You know, Satan t continually tries to remind us that we are not worthy of his love. Um, he would love for us to, to feel as if that was truly the case. Um, but it's not because that's not a spirit of truth because the truth is God loves us no matter what. And God will always love us because God is love. Just like First John is reminding us that God is indeed love. So let us pray that uh, we, we embrace that love and that we also share that love in the world that we live in today. So dear Heavenly Father, again, shine the light of Christ in our lives and remind us once again of your great love for us in Christ Jesus, that you sent him to die for us, to take away our sins, to give us new life in him, which he gives to us freely each and every day. So Lord, help us always to live by your light to follow in your love and to reflect that love in this dark world. Lord, you are the light of, that this world needs, so continue to shine brightly through us. Help us and restore us each and every day to be that light to this world so they see your love in us. We ask this for the sake of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. All right, everybody. Well, you have a great rest of the day, so be careful of the flooded areas, of course, and um, Yep, we'll, we'll catch you next next Wednesday at 4.30 uh, for devotion. Uh, we'll see you Sunday, if not sooner. Take care.